episode next week. We are caught up in the moment. You are caught we up did. in the moment. But it this happens. week, uh, well, I want to start as well, just before we get into what happened last week, I'd like to talk to the audience and to the players about a breach of trust that happened between weeks. <laughs> we, we don't need to tell the... I'm going to tell the listening audience. I need them to no, know. You don't need, they need you to don't know. Need to talk about this. Andrew went behind my back and went off touching my lucky dice and yes. putting all of his curse luck in it. The Hexblade's curse. The Hexblade's <laughs> curse has now been put on my D20. You will no longer roll above a four. <laughs> <laughs> so the like question me. <laughs> The question is going to be going forward is my luck going to outweigh Andrew's unluck his Here's hoping anti luck Yeah I want to see I took one for the team it was a devious act but I it was need a very, you to, I need I will you to say, roll worse I'm very upset because you breached a, a, a level of trust between us. The, the majority is out. We're all pretty happy about what Andrew's done. I know, but I'm the DM. It's a DM player confidentiality trust, and you breached that. We're forming a union. Sneaking yeah, in. Are. He snuck in while we are in the kitchen, you know, eating fantastic bread muffins and having coffee. He comes out with it in his hand. He's like, I can feel the luck <laughs> slipping from it. That could have been any of us. You don't know. Rolled a five. You don't, even, <laughs> you don't even know what he did with it before he brought it out. I know, and I'm upset. He sort of rolled like five times. Extra damp and warm. He's taking it out. So, <laughs> yep. I might have to switch up my dice. Tell but, signs. last week, you guys got into a fight when you tried to rest for an hour with a bullet, a burrowing creature that would leap out of the ground and land on you, dealing significant damage making it very difficult to fight and hit. But, after several people went unconscious, going back up, coming, going down, coming back up... Bit of chumbawamba Bit of chumbawamba in there. Hmm. You did manage to finally defeat the bullets, uh, with Otto and Dogcliff taking it down for the final strike. They bit the bullet. They did. <laughs> so now, just a little bit of housekeeping I'd like to get before we move out of initiative, but Horatio is actually still unconscious and bleeding out and it would have been his turn so give me a death saving throw Horatio sure in the name of housekeeping yeah. in the name of housekeeping why not oh yeah I got it wrong for that. Uh, 15 that's a success easy easy now, success before before he goes again can anyone stabilize or heal Sveta <laughs> alright and you're close enough <laughs> You're close enough to heal him in one round? No, well, look, I'm going to have to drag him with some telekinetic force towards me. Really? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to ragdoll him. <laughs> <laughs> and he will automatically fail his save on that. Yeah, you'd have to. I'm going to drag him through. Can't resist. <laughs> so get his own blood and a bit of the bullet's blood. Yeah, uh, and then you can... <laughs> Okay. And again, I will dig my fingers into his skin and so what, <laughs> apply your, a bit of healing. Your ability, you have an ability that can, like, telekinetically move people. I sure do. Mm. Huh. Jeez. It was, I think she was uh, keeping it on the down low for a while. Yeah, so you could say it's still... a bit of a feature of Spitters. <laughs> I don't know, I'd shorten feature down a bit. Maybe mm. call it a... What's a good... A feat. Mm. Yeah, that rolls off the tongue really nicely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, take 12 healing. 12 healing. Oh, big heals. Okay. Maximum heals. Thank you again. Take negative 12 damage. Don't die on me! I will gladly suffer it. Well, I'd like to know what you guys are doing now. I am going to help Horatio off the ground. Mm -hmm. I think as she helps me up, I'm just going to look at her and, and give her a hug. Yeah, I'll Aww. give you a hug back. Warden's going to walk over and cough <laughs> blood all over all of you. <laughs> oh, the two oh that was a tough one. <laughs> good, good heels, team. Good yeah. heels. <laughs> no one else needs it. As, it's okay. As Warden does come over, I'll like stick my hand out and like shove some nails into oh. your chest as well. And hold him there, Sveta. Hold mm. him. Hold him. Hold him. This and then way. I'm going to apply salve as well. Well, then stay still. Nine healing. Oh, yeah. Well, you got these claws in your chest. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Here comes the salve. I'm not my best. Six points. Oh, yeah. How do you feel? I feel pretty good. Pretty good. Not great, but pretty good. But, uh, Carnelian, you're yeah? so far away. How are you? <laughs> um, as healthy as I was la <laughs> last time. Okay. Yeah, you were staying well back on that one. 
There was some strange, um, almost like depth charges going off there. Is that something you can yeah, do? Yeah, that, that, that was me. What oh. was that? Uh, a spell? Uh, okay. Got that much. Skitty. 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 <laughs> it makes a large, like, uh, like high frequency sound that, like, causes damaging vibrations. You fascinating. crazy bards. <laughs> <laughs> what will you do next? Literally kill you with music. <laughs> okay, so you gathered up. You've. I'm assuming some some salves are going off. I'm going to let you. Yeah, salves are popping. Everyone's in some pretty bad shape. Everyone's been salved now. Yeah. Oh, I haven't received a salve. Oh, you haven't? No, you touched. Oh, I yourself. got right up to you to do it, and <laughs> yeah. then we got separated again. And it's... then you just was like salved your neck in front of me. <laughs> yeah, bare the shoulder. Sweater, 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 sweater. It was a real power move. <laughs> it <Sorry>. was. <laughs> it was. Swear to come here, I'm going to salve you as well. I'm still hugging you. And I'm assuming oh, okay. Otto Dogcliff might need a bit of love as well. Oh, I'm going to give him a cuddle. <laughs> come here, you two. I'll salve you. You can salve both of them at once. It's okay. Oh, I'm going to go full Oprah. Everyone gets a salve. <laughs> <laughs> I already have a, had a salve today. Yeah, we'll do the last lot. Um, Everyone so else. So, you, Sweater, eight points. Oh, thank you. And... Dot, dot cliff. Oh, that one was six. Six. Okay. So dot cliff. They're on third health. <laughs> yeah. Oh wow! <laughs> they took a bit of damage. Oh, gonna. I think we need to actually rest. Yeah. Maybe we should hide a bit further away. I agree. Let's do <laughs> that. Mm-hmm. You could use a nap. So, are you going for a short rest or a long rest? Because Go. long. Yes. What time of day is it? It's still early. We, yeah, because uh, we went from the cave yep. to here. I'm only got one spell left. Yeah, uh, I'm um, running a little empty on spell slots. Same. How about this, guys? Yes. Stake out! And we survey the... What's this thing called? The Nautiloid. Nautiloid. I, don't, I only need a short rest, so... Me too. I can stand guard and you guys sleep and I'll survey the area. For... Eight hours. Eight hours. Yep. Uh, you can only benefit from uh, a short rest once per day. So, like, is uh, it, isn't that sorry, a long rest yeah. once per day. So, I would say that you would need to rest. So, if you were to rest eight hours now, it would take you to probably the early evening. But I'd say you'd actually need to wait till the next next light to get the full benefits out, right? Because mm. the intention is to. To, for it to be a nightly rest. True. Yeah. 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 Sleep um, mm. Well, what I do know is that I don't want to go into that thing uh, where there's potentially more of this gestures towards the exotic creatures on the ground. Mm. Mm. They're <laughs> definitely protecting something. Or yes. they just kept a zoo in their weird alien spaceship mm. that broke out after it crashed. Is that why they abducted you? Ooh, it's burn. Awesome. Oh, no. You zoo animal. Oh, I well, didn't feel bad about that before, but I do now. <laughs> <laughs> What's it the intention, Warden? <laughs> well, I think regardless, we we can't Minimum explore sure. any further in our current state. Oh, we could. It'd just be, well, we frankly, a, f- a bad idea. Fight, yes. How far, we, how far have we travelled from... I think the nearest town's. Um, the nearest town is at least uh, over a day away. That's uh, Duggan's Hole. Ugh. Maybe, maybe we could just do a short it rest. Might be a day away. Yeah. At least then you guys get stuff back and we mm. can see. There we go. Yeah. I mean, a short rest, you'll still be able to get healed up and get some of your abilities back. Yeah. Maybe go into the trees a little bit this time. Breach the trees. Breach the trees. Okay. So you guys go into the trees back away from the side of the Nautiloid. Yeah. Are you taking a short rest, is that correct, or a long rest? Short, short rest, please. Short. Okay. Okay. And then... <laughs> 1d8. You guys are able to take a short rest. Thanks. What's the thing for dog with? Uh, and everybody can add a, an extra d6 to their short rest healing because each, song of rest each roll of the hit die oh man roll the one. Oh no maybe you didn't steal that much luck <laughs> yeah he was just trying no, to I put, wasn't stealing he was no, trying to spread bad luck like, is what he was trying it's, to say uh, okay. when you spend one or more hit dice yeah. you roll an, you get an extra d6 so okay, it's just on top, on top. Yeah. Okay. 
Oh god. And remember, you can choose to spend more Boom. in there after it is. you. Yeah. Uh, I need to roll for Dogcliff. Otto and Dogcliff, yeah. yeah. They've got two different Yep, I'll do the well. date then. Yeah, I'll yep. do... Um, yeah, I'll use a d10 three times for Otto's. Yep. Six and three. I'm back. Plus nine. Plus nine. That's not bad. That's not bad. I found an echo in this room. Found an echo in this room. <laughs> 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 so lame. Um, the Song of Rest that applies to Otto and Dogcliff. Yeah, yeah, that will too. What does it do? It gives it an extra plus six? Uh, D6. 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 Good. Right. Well, I feel great. I definitely feel more alive. Significantly more healthy. Power nap. That was intense. I mean, I'm not going to, you know, I don't want to talk about it too much now because we're still in, you know, potential danger, but that was a real opening experience for me. Mm. Shall we I explore? So. Yep. All right. So you approach the Nautiloid from the tree line. And you can see on this map, if you refer to Roll 20, the squid like tentacles that stretch out. Mm. Um, I'll allow you guys to move where you want. Keeping our eyes open as we approach and taking our time. Okay. For the record, uh, Otto and Dogcliff are full health. All right. Excellent. That is good to know. Once again, MVP in, in a fight. <laughs> mm-hmm. So as you approach the down ship, what you can see at this end where the squid-like tentacles are, they extend into the nose of the ship, and then there's a flat deck that you could get to if you climb up against the bank of snow that's sort of formed up on the deck above. Otherwise, you don't see any other obvious entrances at this stage. What's um, immediately to our east, all that, that blocked off? I can't reveal that area. Oh. Because of the way this map is constructed. But, yeah, like, in the it sense of... Like, it was just the map, open it's, snow, it's, okay. yeah. Oh, right. Oh, uh, okay. But it's just because of the way the map is constructed, if you were to reveal that, it would be like, oh, here's the lower deck. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look into it too much. Okay. So, what would you guys like to do? Well, Carnelian, is anything coming back to you when we get close to it? I don't know. Is there anything coming back to Carnelian as we get close to it? Yeah, this place, uh, you remember something about carrying crawlers and bullets. It's no, I'm pretty sure that was like an hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's just um, like yesterday, but today. So you think that if you get up to where this deck is, uh, there might be a, like a, a dissect, like a main entrance into the sh- into the ship. I mean, that's a safe, pretty safe assumption, but do we want to go like exploring on the deck just yet, or do we just want to... I don't know, what's, what's the plan here, guys? Do you think we should scout the area and just do a bit of a, a lap of the, the ship? What if look, we waken I, another bullet? Look, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm really, really scared of actually going up there. And I'm like, I used up a lot of juice. Mm. We could scout it, yes. Yeah, if we could start with a scout, yeah. Do you want to ride on my shoulders? Would that make you feel better? Uh, yes. Oh. Come on, jump on. Hell yeah! <laughs> <laughs> what a view! Alright. How tall is Horatio? Well, that's Woden. That's good. Why does everybody do that? How tall know. is Woden? He's six foot three. I am. He's a specimen. That's <laughs> Quite the specimen. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, okay. I guess we check it out. Is there any... Can you guys see anything moving in the near the ship or in the woods? Is it in? Is it yeah. near the woods? Um, yeah, so it's sort of in the middle of this open space. Oh, you did say that. Yeah. What do you see from up there, Carnelia? Got a good vantage point up there. Mm-hmm. You can roll a perception check if you'd like. I'll lift him up even higher. <laughs> can, I, can you give me assistance? <laughs> Not from what he can see, but he's increasing my height by so much. <laughs> this is like. Four extra carnelians that I can see. <laughs> um, that's a ten. Okay. This deck is five feet above the valley floor and is covered with fresh snow. Mounted to the deck is a ballista covered in ice. At the back of the deck is a double door that looks like it's made of chitin and iron. And this deck is tucked under two higher decks, the lower of which has another ballista that you can just see peeking out from the side. Those upper decks look like they could be another 25 to 45 feet up. 
so it'd be quite a difficult climb to get up there. Right, but so getting up to this lower deck, the five feet up, the snow's all piled up, it's easy to get there. So multiple decks, we could get to this like lower one here. Uh, Have a bit of a look. Doesn't look like anybody's there. Hmm. Any signs of movement? Can I you look? don't see anything at this stage. Mm. Nothing as of yet. Let's uh, cautiously approach, shall we? Have a look. Okay. I'm going to move you into the... Because it's easy to climb there, I'm assuming all of you would like to move into the lower deck. Mm-hmm. Yes, I'm going to move you there. You can just place Carnelian directly on. This is your, <laughs> you're, you're more than five feet up. Is the ballista inoperable due to the weather conditions? or Do you want to make a roll? Probably a straight-up intelligence roll. I'll, um... Can I check it out as well? Oh, yeah, I was about to say, I was just looking to, like, tap Warden on the shoulder and ask if he could do it. Well, you're on my shoulder. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, we're both looking. Who's looking? Because I'll guide him. <laughs> me. Okay, guidance. I don't know why me. Think smart. I have... What am I rolling? Investigation? You can do an invest. Actually, investigation would be appropriate here. Yeah. Was yeah. it with advantage? Don't forget your guidance. Is that a d4? d4. <laughs> it's still not going to be great. <laughs> yeah, you have yeah. advantage, don't you? Yeah, like Jen said, advantage, I oh. think. Because yeah. oh. you're helping? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's better. Yeah. Teamwork. Uh, 22 plus 2. Okay. You take a look around the ballista trying to there's obviously some some mechanisms there that you try and shift and move but it's quite obvious to you once you've taken a good look around it it is it is uh, inoperable uh, and it probably looks like it's suffered quite a lot of damage from when this ship crashed it just uses like regular ammunition it's not doesn't look like it's some sort of it's a ballista space so it, weapon yeah anything. it looks like it would just use like a giant like a bolt bolts yeah yeah right which is which? When you sort of think about it that way, you're like, "That's kind of weird," but also, is it? Because how much do you know about aliens in this setting? How much do I know about aliens in this setting? Yeah. <laughs> Roll a nature check. <laughs> yeah. Roll an aliens check. Wait, it's the history channel, right? Roll a history check. <laughs> yeah. So that's what you find out. It's an, it looks inoperable. Okay, well, what are these doors? Yeah, I'm thinking what you're thinking, Sverdar, I saw you. Let's open it. You approach yes. the doors. Let's and inspect them. Carnelian, are you sure, sure you want to Oh, shit! <laughs> Make sure no, they're not, like, booby-trapped or something. Yes, let's inspect them for traps. Sure. Yep. Roll an investigation check for booby traps. Don't forget your own guidance again. Yeah. <laughs> Pat myself on the back. Thanks, Kay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ooh, mm-hmm, okay. Are you sure you want to go inside, Carnelian? 20, no, 22, baby. We should anyway. Alright, let's do it. You search the door and you don't notice anything that would be a trap, but what you do notice is, much like the F- East Haven Ferry, the door is iced shut. Unlike that, where it was quite easy to... Someone had obviously been continually picking away at the ice along the door to make it still easy to open, this looks like it's completely iced over, so it would take a bit of strength mm. to pull it out, to open it. Could I have a bit of a listen... See if I can listen through. Perception check. Sure. I'm going to check the walls next yeah. to the door, see if there's any, like, buttons or hidden, like, Go swipe things. Or... Uh, perception check as well. So, Callan, just a general question. How does guidance sort of work? Do I just keep patting myself on the back before I do everything? It's a or... general answer. Yes. I, I like to think of it... Try and I like to try and think of it making logical sense. So, checks that require a long distance and knowledge checks, I would say things are things that you can't really use guidance on. But with investigation and stuff like that, you should be good to pat yourself and okay. do it. Oh, and that one. Oof. That's what you get for asking. Um, you were after a listening check, so yeah. it's it's completely iced over, so any sounds, you're, you're like, oh man, it's hard to hear what could be in there. Your ice is blocking, blocking it. I have a crowbar if you want to try and smash it. The ice, I mean. Do we yeah, I mean, strength? If there's anything on the other side, it'll definitely be a nice uh, knock on the door for them. Um, yeah, I mean, I just want to... Do we have an escape plan? Um, I'm just assuming the worst here. Just uh, being Kelbor's advocate. Pretty <laughs> sure our escape plan at this stage is running as fast as we can. Okay. <laughs> okay, good, good plan, eh? Yeah, I'm, I'm, with the, I'm with that, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's smash it in. Yeah, let's do it, fuck it. Okay. Claymore. Okay. 
All right, so with a crowbar, will give you advantage on an athletics check, which you can use to try and open the doors. Do you have guidance? I do actually have a uh, proficiency in athletics. But... Oh, nice. Don't forget your guidance. I, I will have a guidance, thank you. Uh, 15 plus 3 is 18, plus... 1 is 19. Okay, so you're doing the, the opening, right? So you walk up to this set of double doors with a crowbar and you just... No, no, no. Warden walks currently enough with a crowbar. <laughs> I think at this point, he's suspended <laughs> disbelief, he might have to put you down. Yeah. 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 I think you have to get off his shoulders. Can, can, now, I, can, to be can Kenny like, get off his shoulders and just like. Gr- like <laughs> well, well, what are the rules for mounted combat? <laughs> <laughs> is is Warden considered a mount? It depends <laughs> on whether or not the mount can act independently of the rider or not. <laughs> <laughs> to make it things up. Un- if you're pulling his hair and controlling him <laughs> like a, like a rat. Linguini. Um. To make things uncomplicated, I'm going to get you to dismount the Woden now at All this right. point. Uh, so you leap off of Woden's shoulders and bury the crowbar into the doors. Uh, and using your leverage, you're able to pry the doors open. And they, with an extraordinarily loud sound of cracking ice and shifting metal, they swing open. All right, I'm pretty sure anybody knows we're here now. Let me just uh, reveal open the door for you guys. I have a few comments. Mm. I have one more important comment. You can all get salved again. It's a short rest. It's a short rest. Yeah. yeah. Woo. Oh, okay. Hi. First things first. Attached to the walls of this chamber, uh, you can see some metal circular pod-like structures that seem to be leaking green liquid all along the sides of this chamber. It looks like they're designed to hold large creatures. A staircase rises to the next deck amid crates, barrels, tables, and broken bits of equipment. Moving among the detritus are four creatures. Three of them are small, repulsive purple things that float above the ground and pull themselves across the floor using oversized face tentacles. The fourth is a lumbering monstrosity made of stitched together parts from goblins, dwarves, and reindeer. Rain. They Santa. turn to you and roll for initiative. Oh, piss off. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's not your fault. You're just calling it as you see it. Right? Yeah, you Let's dickhead. <laughs> Ooh, two good initiative rolls in a row. A treasure box uh, like no, this. No, see, that's good. No. See, that's what you want to roll like shit when you're a cleric. Okay. You want to go last. Woden. Nine. Nine? Sveta. 15. 15. Carnelian. 19. 19. Ratio. Fear. What? Four. Four. <laughs> Jeez. And Otto and Dugcliffe. No. Oh. 16 plus 2. 18. 18. So okay. that's a decent roll. It's a 14 on the dice. Yeah, it's just not me. <laughs> <laughs> so Fuck. apparently I can. But you had roll spirits. For like, you rolled it with enthusiasm. All right, okay. He's got to take it on. Okay. Like, not just before, the, fi- like, not the I, finest dice roller in the world. Like, yeah. When I rolled in your dice before, I'm just like, pick, pick. All right, okay. But the most enthusiastic. And carefree. I'm, I'm somewhat of a gangster, so. <laughs> <laughs> we call him the dice gangster. Okay. Word up. So the first person to go is Carnelian. Healing word up. Healing word up. Uh, fairy fire. Boom. Okay. Where are you centering it? Uh, you right in the middle of the room because it's got a 20 foot radius. Okay. Uh, so it can hit all the creatures in there? Yeah. Dexterity save. Dexterity saves. Okay, let's start with this big creature. This stitched together creature uh, of different goblin and reindeer parts. Alright, now this is this is the dice. It was touched. Now, I rolled a sixteen. Uh, it is an it is a negative one to its dex. Uh, DC's thirteen. All right, so not affected. Mm, not yeah, you weren't affected. <laughs> me, me touching the dice. Uh, yeah. Now the little creatures that were crawling across the floor with their face tentacles. Mm, the dickheads. Uh, failure on one. Nice. Failure on two. Nice twice. Twelve on the other. Failure as well. Hat trick. Nice thrice. Oh, there you go. 
sports reference. I feel Yay. like... Yay! <laughs> I got it and I liked it. Thank you. <laughs> so we have advantage to hit all the little squiggly dibs. Nice. Let's hit the little dickheads. What'd you call them? Squiddly dibs? <laughs> Squiddly dibs. That's You're almost talking simlish without even knowing it. <laughs> Squiddly dibs. Well, you, you're the expert, so I'll take your own for yeah, it. You're, right, anything else? something of an authority. Anything else Cuddly would like to do? Uh, draw his melee weapon. Okay. Otto and Dogcliff. Let's see. Wow. Yeah, they're going to go right in. I feel confident. Is Daddy. that a staircase right in the middle there? That is a staircase. Is that, so... That's going up? <laughs> yeah. Right. So, uh, sorry, they'll have to. Oh, look, they'll just go to. Okay. Santa. Flesh man over there going. Oh, is it Santa? Well, He's part reindeer, I don't know, it's a stretch. Oh, good old Santa. Yeah, it's, 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 it's good like old Santa. <laughs> Christmas homunculus. <laughs> Jesus, stick a beard on him. Oh. Santa Claus. <laughs> He's returned. Oh, the the right. left the leftovers from the from the Christmas one shot. Oh yeah, it is. <laughs> he is literally made from Christmas leftovers. <laughs> a fruit pudding golem. Pudding golem. Uh, what is it? Mince pie. Frankincense monster. <laughs> okay. All right. Um. Dogcliff's gonna go in for a bite. Yep. Nineteen on the dice. Oh, okay, yeah, baby. Go. That's a hit. Okay. Uh, and. While I'm doing this, can you roll a strength save for me, please? Uh, that'll be a 14. No, he's fine. Right. But, uh... It's happening again. Plus strength. <laughs> Don't forget plus strength. It's still four. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. one of the things I'm going to tell you, you notice with that hit, it doesn't do any damage. Oh, really? Jesus. Yes, really. Is that- I wonder if that's just because it's piercing. We'll go on for a swipe okay. and see if slashing damage does anything. Okay. Yep. Yep. Fairy fire. Oh, he doesn't. He doesn't have. Does, yeah, he does doesn't he? have. He didn't get fairy fired. No. Although, for a swipe, is 16? 16's a hit. And once again, you notice it doesn't do any damage. I still want to roll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was a nine just for record purposing. Mm. That's it. Okay. Sveder, it's your turn. Hmm. There's no point transforming if they're not going to take any damage. I really wasn't expecting this. To, hmm. Three dickheads and a Santa. I uh, wasn't <laughs> expecting this. <laughs> I never expect Santa with three dickheads. <laughs> no one does. Um, can Santa take a, a deck save for me, please? I'm going to okay. cast Bonfire on <laughs> Oh... Oh. Uh, that was 13, but then minus 1, 12. Yes! Nice. Got him. Get burnt, bitch! Okay. Yeah. Ooh. Max, 8. Excellent. 8, eight fire. 8 fire. Okay. Oh, fitting, like a chimney. He's got his ass So. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't like the fire. What was the damage? 8. 8, okay. He takes damage, and you see, you think that does go through. No, I'm going to end it there. Okay. It's its turn. It's going to move towards the doors, taking an attack of opportunity, opportunity. From, of Dog, Cliff, and Otto. Um, Make it with the dog in case it trips. Yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah, true. Right, here we go. Here we go. Oh, oh. <laughs> Shit. Uh, seven. Oh. Seven's a miss. <laughs> I was ready to roll Sorry. my my uh, dexterity save, my my strength save, and everything. That's Ooh, not a technique either. Roll for Odin now. Okay, yeah. so yeah, it's going please. to try <laughs> and get two slams off. So first things first, it will try and make an attack on both Sveta and Carnelian. Now, because it was hit with fire damage, it has a ability, like well, not ability, uh, a trait called Aversion to Fire. It has disadvantage on its attack rolls and ability checks. To the end of its turn. Nice. Yeah, yeah, it's scared of the fire. Well, that's two on the lower dice. Nice. It's gonna be a miss. And now against Carnelian. <laughs> that dice still rolled a natural twenty on it. But uh, but, but the second dice, it would be fourteen to hit. Uh, I think that might equal. Yeah, that equals my AC. Okay, two D eight plus four damage. Twelve points of bludgeoning damage. Ew. And you actually feel like it held back. Uh, good to know, good to know. Thanks, Santa. Um, <laughs> Warden, it's your <laughs> turn. Thanks, Santa. 
Keep setting it on fire, please. I <laughs> would if I Kellen. could. Depends on Kellen's dice. <laughs> it's not very dexterous, so... We'll just push, We'll just, like, push it over. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, yeah sure. Shove it back on the fire. <laughs> like, I can't do physical damage to it, but right. I wonder what happens if I just, like... Give it a shove. <laughs> but can't she just recast it constantly? Because it, yeah. it's a cantrip, right? Can, yeah. But it, like it's every time, though, so. Yeah. Can I pass I can pass through Carnelian Square? Yes, yeah. you can, yeah. I'm going to go in Oh, uh, maybe. Hold on a sec. I just I took damage, so uh, I actually lose the fairy fire. Okay. Oh man. Bummer. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so I'm gonna um, pass by Carnelian and go inside the door. And up next to Santa. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and yes. I'm going to say, come here, pretty. And I'm going to cast Hex on it. Okay. So use that guy. And that's a spell. And What's the disadvantage? Strength. Mm. Okay. Yeah. It'll be easier okay. to push over if it's strength. Yeah, alright. I'll do strength as the disadvantage. It has a pretty good strength score, so it's not bad. It would make that disadvantage. Mm. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. So that's me bonus action. Okay. For my action, can I cast a, a cantrip? No, because... Well, is it, sorry, is the hex a hex spell? Hex is a spell. So that's a leveled spell, so no. You said cantrip. Cantrip. Hex is a cantrip? No, no, no. no. Can I now Oh, you cast can cast a... Sorry, you can cast yeah. a cantrip, yes. Okay, then I'm going to do... Let's go Booming Blade. So Booming Blade's made with an attack roll. Yep, that should be good. Boom. Roll to hit. Uh, cool. I will do that. Ooh, whoa! Whoa, man. Whoa. The confidence. That was a 15, that first one. Uh, 17 to hit. That's there a hit. go. Yeah. Confidence. I want you to specifically tell me what damages it does, though. I will do that. Let me just work out my stuff. So that is uh, four plus five. Oh, this isn't going to do shit. It might be because uh, it's magic damage. Well, what's? Oh, it is a magic weapon. So the weapon damage won't. So the weapon damage is not. The weapon's not magical, right? No, it is. It is magical. Yes, because it's my hex weapon. No, packed weapon. Okay. Cool. So what the damage is magical for the purposes of overcoming resistances. Yes. Then yes, all this damage will go through. Uh, so four plus five uh, slow piercing. Yep. And then if he moves, then booming blade. Okay. He so moved in oh, and me hex. Sorry. 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 Oh, f- one <laughs> point of necrotic. So ten points total. Yeah. Okay. Horatio, it is your turn. Okay. If you shove him, would that? Trigger the booming blade? Is that considered him? No, no, it can't be forced movements. Oh, all right. All right. Yeah, one, two. All right, just, you know, your classic dingy dong. Okay. So, can you please make a wisdom save, oh wise Santa? <laughs> Natural one. You did leap yeah. curse into this dice. Dumb shit. <laughs> it's a slow burn. It's it's slowly applying. I'm not happy about it. It's going to insult him. The it's... luck is evaporating into the ether. Here we go. Because he's taking damage. 1d12. Oh, it's a two. Okay. Two points of necrotic damage. Does go through. Okay. Good to know. Uh, I'm going to stay where I am. Okay. It is the little squidly things at the back's turn, and they all try and move as far away from you guys as possible. Really? And start dodging. They're so cute. Squidly? (laughs) So they're they're taking the dodge action. Those you little dickheads. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, I gotta leave. I need to leave it there. Okay. Cool. Something else happens. Uh, the it is oh, no. Carnelian's turn. All right. Uh, Carnelian would like to make the shove action against okay. uh, Evil Santa. All right. Uh, so <laughs> opposed athletics checks. Okay. And I get disadvantage on this, don't I? Because of the curse. Nine. Also nine. Oh. Roll off again. Roll off. What an oh, oh, you bum. Natural 20 on one of the dice and 18 on the other. Yeah, you, you got that. All right, no shoves. Anything else you'd like to do? Uh, nope. Otto and Dogcliff. We'll try and make this guy prune. Okay. 
with a bite. So where would you like to move Otto and Dogcliff? Pardon? Would you like to move them near I, the door? Yeah, I'll move um, up five feet next to Woden. Okay. And I'll roll for Dogcliff's bite. Okay. Six. Six. Pack yes. Six. Whoa. Yeah, pack this. Let's go. Let's get that one. Okay. Yeah. It's all right. Uh, Fifteen. Fifteen's a hit. So no damage, but uh, let's see if he's prone. Oh, you did leave so much in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, Eleven. Yeah, or meats. Meats. Oh, so no, why did I sound enough. so excited? <laughs> I, it was a seven on the die. I'm very upset with you, Andrew. <laughs> okay, Spatter, it is your turn. Did you roll it? Oh, no, that's a saving turn or a skill check. Um, yeah. You could roll autos if you wanted to, but it wouldn't actually, unfortunately, give him any damage, so... No, it is multi-attack. Yeah, you, couldn't, you can't really use the help or anything. No, because you've already used the yeah, attack. Just squawk, action. sadly. He, he will try and hit him. Spatter, it's your turn. I don't have a weapon to imbue Shillelagh, so... Scornfire? Yeah, that bonbon. You did give away your weapon. Well, yeah. the bonbon makes him weaker. The bonbon. Roll me a deck save, please. Okay. That's better. 16. Yeah. Um, okay. So it, it avoids the fire. Um, can you also make a strength save for me, please? I'm just going to shove him away from us. I don't know where you're going to shove him, but uh, that will be a 13. No. Yes, 13. Oh, yeah, he's affected. That's nice. Okay. Nice. It was a 14. I'm just going to, like, shove him just a little bit away from Carnelian. Can he get into the crevice that's right beside? No, he would only really be able to get here. Actually, yeah. I, yeah. I don't really want him near um, Carnelian. I'll shove him next to Woden. Sorry, Woden. <laughs> it's all right. I'm here for it. That's it. All right. So, it is his turn. Uh, he's going to try and hit Woden twice. Yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry. Uh, now, he didn't get hit by fire, so it won't be disadvantage. Oh. Natural one is going to miss. Yep. I hate you so much. <laughs> Alright, that's about 18 to hit. Does hit. 2d8 plus 4. Oof. Well, I rolled 1 and an 8, so I guess exactly average. Uh, so that is 13 points of bludgeoning damage. And again, mm-hmm. you feel like he's holding back. Like he could, he's pulling a punch. Cool. It's Woden's turn. Uh, Woden's going to... Uh, he's going to kind of do a little duck and weave after... I'm going to say maybe he dodged out of the way of the first blow. Yep. And did like a, an evasive maneuver and he's now like sort of rotated around the side of this thing. And he's going to go for a, another stab right in the ribs. Okay. Go for it. Ooh, hey. Hell yeah, that's the secret. 23. 23 is a hit. So, uh, seven points of magical piercing. Yep. And fuck, one point of necrotic. Okay. All goes through. Anything else you'd like to do? Do you have a dagger? Yes, can I throw a dagger to Sveta? Roll to hit. <laughs> Do it. Don't worry, I'm shit at Sveta, this. Did you, just, did you just say, did you ask him for a dagger? Because I have a mace. Five. Don't you need that? I just wanted to know if you'd yeah. actually stick her. I don't think I've used um, it once. Really? You can... Wait, plus. Because it's not my effect. It's plus, okay. <laughs> plus three. It's so, all right, I'm just, I'm just kidding. So, uh, <laughs> uh, Woden slides a dagger across to. I was going to catch it like mid air or something. <laughs> Blade the first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Horatio. Then it would be your turn, unless there's anything else. Uh, no, I'm all good. Okay, Horatio, your turn. Can I just, as a free action, just have a bit of a look and try and get a gauge of what this thing's intent is? Yes, you can. Make an insight check. I am not going to say anything because I'll jinx myself. <laughs> <laughs> Nat two, so seven. All you can tell is what everyone else has been feeling. Like, he's hitting, but he looks like he's trying not to kill someone. Put it that way. He's pulling punches. Was he pulling punches on me as well? Yes, everyone. Okay. All right. I guess. So you can see him, like, wind up for a hit, and rather than just going straight for it, he just sort of, like... And he's, like, stopping short from really letting it out. Okay. 
Okay. I'm, um, I guess, although I have an idea of what's happening, I guess Horatio doesn't. So, oh no, the Horatio would know that from that role. Well, he can pull punches, yeah, but he you don't know what insight, the intent is, though, He doesn't yeah. have sufficient insight to make an inference that perhaps yeah. this thing is guarding and not... Oh, okay, I'm just going to have to go with her, what Horatio. Rolling a two. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, this buddy... Ding dong. <laughs> My tralala. My ding ding dong. <laughs> My ding ding dong. Make a whizzy whiz. Say, make a wisdom save for me, please, okay. Callum. Uh, ooh, I think that's going to fail. Uh, yeah, ten. Yep, fail. Okay. Here we go. My tralala. Oh, Three, three. Uh, it's just the swing of the, that that uh, ability. I'm pulling, I'm pulling punches with my ding dong. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. I hate it when you pull your ding dong out. Um, okay, anything else you'd like to do? Um, does anyone else get the feeling that he's not really? He's pulling punches a bit. I don't know why, but I've definitely noticed he's pulling punches. I haven't noticed. I've noticed. Maybe he wants to keep us alive. That's a terrifying thought. Mm. <laughs> Okay. I end my turn. It is now the little squidly dinks turn. <laughs> <laughs> and, you, and you haven't got me for changing your name every time. <laughs> I'd like all of them, though. They <laughs> continue to dodge at the back there. And, additionally, coming down the stairs and around the corner, Uh-oh. you can see a creature around the corner. It has got a bulbous purple head with squid-like tentacles. Oh, shit. You are like, is that thing really far away? Because it doesn't look very big. It's not like a full human size. It's about halfling size. Oh, cute. Instead of a full full uh, humanoid. It's got this little tiny, like... Oh my god, look at him, he's so small. <laughs> <laughs> little, it's got a little uh, device in its hand, and it turns around and sees you all fighting at the ship. Hmm. And it starts talking. It goes like... <laughs> And then it like listens and none of you react. And it tries saying it's a different language. Uh, what languages do people know? Squid. I know, yeah, that uh, specific one. Common, Draconic, and Dwarvish. Okay. Common Celestial. Yep. That's all of mine. No, nothing new from yep. everything. Uh, okay. Elvish and Druidic. So it goes through a couple of different languages and then it's sort of like, you see it sort of like, almost like its shoulders slump slightly. And then in your heads, you hear something. Stop! There is no need for violence. Please, lower your weapons. What does the what does Santa do? And it turns to it. Um, it turns to sand. Sand. <laughs> <Yes>. uh, <laughs> so I don't know. Abomination thing. Well, <laughs> yeah, no. You can to... call it Santa if you want. The abominable snowman. <laughs> And then you see it. So you see it now talk again in another language, and it looks at the abomination of flesh, uh, and it it has like its arm up as if it's going for a punch, and it just lowers its arm. Are you gonna say something, Andrew? I was gonna say Woden turns and like angles the spear towards this new guy that's approached, hmm. and he's that's all. That's all he does. He does nothing else. He's just got his arm open as if he's in Jurassic World, and <laughs> he's like. There's no need for violence here. Please. Carnelian? Uh, Do you know this man? Absolutely not. We're our best friends. Carnelian is (laughs) going to... um, You're a hidden squidling, aren't you? (laughs) Oh, shit. (laughs) Carnelian is going to um, sheath his rapier. uh, And... uh, uh, Let's get a quick... Um, can I get an insight check on this guy? Sure can. Oh, well, that's like a four. But Almost I'm... impossible to read. It's got an alien nature that is somehow... It's like its features are so different from a from face features. There's no mouth to go mm. by. The eyes are just these inky black dots on the side of its head. It's really difficult to think about, to know what it's thinking. Hey, Callan, would you allow me to have a go? Uh, sure. See if I can get anything well, okay. from it. What I'm really interested in more than anything else, are you guys going to... Because I will give that on your turn. It is kind of Ian's turn now. Mm-hmm. Um, but if you guys are, are all going to say, well, we're not going to attack, I will let, bring us out of combat. Well, Carnelian is going to, as a 
Kenny Lane is going to sheath his sword in, in an attempt to okay. not continue the fight. Alright, so it goes to Otto and Dogcliff. Do they want to continue fighting, or do you get them to heal? Um, I'll get him to heal. Sveta? I'll, mm, I don't really have anywhere to put this dagger. I'll stick it into the door. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's my ship you're doing. I don't have a pocket. It has feelings, too. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Take it it's on fire. Why have you got it on fire? Okay. It then goes to the uh, the, the, ab- the abomination of flesh's turn, and it just puts both hands down by its side. It doesn't attack anyone. Woden? Yeah, right. I'll put the... I'll not sheath it, but I'll, like, use, like hold the spear as, like, kind of a walking stick. Not okay. in an aggressive way. And I'll push the abomination away from me. <laughs> just as one hand, like, a, like a getaway. <laughs> <laughs> I don't trust you. Uh, and Horatio, you can make that uh, insight check if you wanted to. Yep. I'll put my ding dong away. Okay. Aww. Don't worry. He'll be back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, two and then a one. <laughs> the joke's, joke's on me. I'm supposed to be really insightful, but I'll probably do it a one. Six. Again, this creature is alien. It's so unlike anything else you're used to. Um, you just can't get any body language from it, facial cues. It's very strange. Should have used my hex in that fight. Why didn't you? No, I um, shouldn't have. Well, I'll, call, oh. I'll call out to him. Is this your ship? Okay, so now that it's seen you all, like, not point weapons and you haven't attacked, it has the device in its hand and it puts it in its holster, like, on its hip, so it puts his hands up. It's like, there is nothing to fear. Yes, this is my ship. Or at least... My and my partner's ship. What's your name? My name is difficult to pronounce in your language, but it is Dreydavex. Can I call you Picasso? <laughs> if you, if that pleases you, <laughs> yes, you may. And he starts walking forward, and you can see he's like, yeah, as I said, he's like half height. Um, he, so you guys all tower, except for Kundali, and all of you sort of tower over him. What was his name again, sorry? My name is Dreydavex. Dreydavex. Uh, sorry, uh, what are you doing in Icewind Dale? So, he's uh, he walks forward and he says, We have crashed here on your plane of existence. It was not intentional. Um, you wouldn't happen to have been, like, picking people up, would you? Yes. We often are curious about different creatures of this plane, and we have been studying them. Did you happen to lose any occupants when you crashed? Several did escape once we crash-landed here in this plane. Mm. Do you happen to recognize this escapee? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> I assume you're pointing at, uh, at Carnelian. Yes. He looks over and he says, Yes. I do believe that you were on the ship when we crashed. It is good to see that you survived. Did you, like, do anything to me? Only butt stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we, no. What do you mean by do? We studied you and several others here from the far northern lands in this cold wilderness. You held him against his will. I am sorry you feel that way. It is our nature to study. We are naturally curious. Were you going to let me go, or was the my escape purely chance? Your escape was chance, but we were going to allow you to leave normally. Can I do an inside check on that? You sure? <laughs> yeah. Come on, I would three. like it, that as well. Aye, oh, yeah, yeah, here we go. Dirty 20. Another two, so no, I got another one. <laughs> Um, so, yeah, Carnelian, you don't, you don't know that the alien nature is still, uh, eluding you, but, um, Horatio, there is a familiarity in what he's saying. Uh, you almost liken it to a doctor studying rare cases of disease on patients where sometimes they get detached and they don't necessarily empathize with the subjects that they are, they see it as like they a see. 
exactly. an experiment or like a petri dish almost rather than being a human. Yes, and you think that maybe there's a slight amount of detachment here going on. You don't necessarily think that there was ill intent per se, but you might feel that they don't necessarily think of the consequences of their actions potentially. Did you insert anything into Carnelian? We did not. <clears throat> and he looks around a bit and he goes, The cold air is coming into the ship through the door that you have opened and is playing with our temperature controls. If you wish, could you please come inside and shut the doors? Perhaps I will take you to my partner. It would be best to discuss with both of us. Are you going to try and imprison us? No, we have no intent to. We are stranded here. In fact, we could use your assistance if you would give it to us. Can we trust you? Do you have any assurances? I don't know what assurances I can give you, but leave I Santa promise... Re- sorry, sorry to interrupt, uh, Dread of X, but could you perhaps leave the abomination outside the cold? The flesh golem is here tidying up. He will remain here with the squidlings, keeping them in line. Is that sufficient? Can I look over at the abomination and do like a nature or an arcana check? Arcana check. Just amazing. Uh, roll advantage because I said the name of the creature. I'm just imagining with this tiny little dustpan and brush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like he like dropped a broom. Yeah. <laughs> arcana. Arcana, yeah. Roll with advantage because I said the name. Fifteen. Fifteen. A flesh golem. A construct. Um, you know that these creatures are. Immutable in form, often, uh, like, for example, if you had a polymorph spell, you couldn't affect it with it. They have aversions to fire, and they absorb lightning and heal. Hmm. Um, They actually have magic resistance, which I should have realized. Uh, So they probably would have taken less damage. Uh, But otherwise, yeah, it's it's got a lot of immunities to non-magical stuff, too. Did Mm -hmm. you make this abomination? This is my golem, yes. It's disgusting. Where did you get it from? Oh, here and there. <laughs> <laughs> Can I personally just say the reindeer is a fine touch? I thought it was very pretty. Do you need all of its parts on it? Uh, I would prefer to keep it intact. Okay. Um, if you'd allow me, I'd love to uh, uh, examine it a little ah, bit. You are curious as well. I, I am a surgeon myself. I feel a kinship with you. It's disgusting. Uh, all right, can we... Perhaps you will come to see the captain. Listen here, bucko. Is the captain your partner? Yes. Okay. It is just the two of us, a golem and the squidlings. What are the squidlings? The squidlings are idiotic. <laughs> That's really right. mean. But they are like children <laughs> to us. Can we, like, maybe avoid other questions until we get both of them? Just so that we don't have to repeat any questions. Yeah, sure. Well, I, I don't know why, but something tells me we can trust him. I trust mm. you. Mm, thanks. Appreciate that, Sveta. I don't trust any of this. <laughs> yeah, are you having flashbacks? What do you look like right now? Yeah, this thing Adelian is... Yeah. is having an existential crisis <laughs> right now. <laughs> Come on, I'll put you on my shoulders. Oh. Calm down. Dogcliff can be a support dog. <laughs> Dogcliff is a medium-sized creature, a potential mount. True. Not a support medium-sized creature. <laughs> Not Otto, he's still a baby. <laughs> but big baby. A big boy. It would be harder to make a saddle for a bear. All right, will you follow the, him up and say, please, this way. Did he say his partner's name yet? Not at this stage. <laughs> All right, let's go then. All right, let's Lead go. Lead on, good sir. I want one of those squidlings as a pet. So you move through an upper deck, and you can see here, as you're moving through here, this was the um, outside deck that you saw with the other ballista. Um, And then you can see there's other stairs going up, and you can see a closed door here as well. And finally, you move into inside here as well, uh, which you can only surmise is potentially the bridge. Uh, Oh. He brings you all oh, upstairs. Lost. Oh, I moved the bonfire with me. That's... <laughs> I assume you let that go out. The bonfire is eternal. Drain of X moves you upstairs, uh, and you can see what is obviously another another one of his kind, also half size. So cute. Vorin. <laughs> These creatures have approached the ship. They may be willing to assist us. 
And he steps out of his chair and turns around and looks at all of you. First of all, why would we help you when you just held our friend here captive against his will? You've done it to others before, and you don't understand that that's fucked up. That's not what we do here. I've got a right mind to hit you in the face. <laughs> Vorin, you sort of like see him like almost taken aback before he has a chance to speak. You're sort of assaulting him with all these accusations. He goes, Jacques! <laughs> and he goes, I am sorry that you feel that way. It is our nature to study, and we are curious. We mean no harm. Why did the ship crash? Ah, uh, an unfortunate tale. We were flying low over the forest nearby. We had several subjects that we were studying, and one of them got loose. Unfortunately, as there was a blizzard going at the same time, my efforts were here at the bridge steering the ship, and Dredovax tried to keep control of the situation. Unfortunately, an explosion on the lower decks caused instability, and we crashed. We have been here ever since, trying to repair. Well, you said you required assistance, so... So what do you need, and what are you going to give us in return? We have managed to repair most of the structural damage to the vessel. However, our power supply got incredibly damaged in the crash, and much of our ability to make sure the ship is fully powered and operational has been terminated. We require an alternate power source. We have been sending out distress signals, perhaps to those that might be able to find us and may be sympathetic. We think that we require some psi crystals, which may allow us to power the ship up and leave this place. Psi crystals. Can you describe them? Psi crystals are crystalline structures that are often found in places where others of our kind live. Our kind is often drawn to underground areas where crystals are abundant. Some of them are sometimes called, I believe in your language, mines or excavations. Quarries? Quarries, yes. That is also a place that they can be found. What do they look like? Difficult to describe. They are purplish, cr long purplish crystals that are in a oblong shape. They are not perfectly symmetrical, often having many different lines and odd angles, which give them a appearance of a not perfect structure. Very rare for crystals, you see, that are often in perfect symmetry. Um, just without saying anything, on hearing this would we like be able to put two and two together? Is this the same as the crystals that we found? Shardlin? Don't know. Okay. Do, we, do we actually have Shardlin? Or do we have like no, the ice some... crystals from the very first episode? We've got that. You've got both because you found some Shardlin in the hideout near the Khan from one of the brothers. And then you have those ice crystals from the start. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Let me do see. We wanna... We've got three Shardlins and... You've got some crystals. Well. Yeah, yeah. From the yeah we've got three shuttlings. Okay. Yeah. Do, okay. Do we want to see if the those work? Well, I'd like to know what they're going to give us in return first. Well, yeah, I I, I assume they're not uh, asking for help for free. I don't know. They kidnap people and don't understand. So, what do you what do you have for us in return if we bring you some of these psi crystals? Ah, uh, yes. Creatures such as yourselves often require a reward to help others. I believe that we can offer you something. He turns to uh, Dredovax and he nods. We are willing to part with some of our items of which you would call powerful. They may assist you terrestrial creatures in this place. These weapons, and he unholsters the, the gun that he has, like this, oh. this thing oh. that he has that is very gun-shaped. And he says, these weapons are particularly potent. We will offer you a couple of them. Plus, we have some items that you would consider any, like, air quotes, magical in nature. Well, that sounds like a good deal. I mean, I'd take it. Yeah, I'm, I'm for it. Sveta, what do you think? Sure. Should we first 
Should we should we tell him about what we've got and see if that's actually Psy Crystal? Perhaps also if they've got any other experiments, maybe letting them go as well? All of our experiments either escaped or we had already released. Okay. Unfortunately, due to the erratic temperature controls in the ship, which have been damaged, uh, some of our pets escaped into the wilderness. Additionally, I have another concern. There was a terrestrial creature that we had aboard. It is the creature that, in fact, caused the explosion in the lower decks. It is an unfortunate case. You see, often our kind, although not exactly our kind, reproduce by using our spores implanted in a humanoid creature's head to turn them into ceramorphs. We have several of these on this ship, but we did not intend to implant any of them into any of the creatures. You see, that is not our way. But one of the creatures got loose and found the spore pod, and one of those attached into its head. The creature went insane, causing the destructive hole in the ship, and we believe that creature escaped. It is possible that he is still out there. What does it look like? Is he, is he admitted into East Haven General right now? <laughs> it was a... I believe the creatures are human oh from the parlance. Uh, standard build. Gray, gray brown hair. Is his name Sulk by any name? By any chance? We do not know the names of any of the terrestrial creatures which we took. Just saying, guys, it might be the one of the missing people who came back and then turned into a serial killer. Mm, Just saying. That's what I was thinking, too. I wonder, like, if you can, I don't know quite how, like, telepathically yep. talking is. Can he telepathically, like, display an image in our head? Sure. Um, he will display the image of the creature, and it doesn't look like Harren Salk. Okay. It's fucking Skeen. <laughs> God damn it. I, I have a creature in my head. <laughs> I gave one to my brother. <laughs> we are the best illithids around. Does it remind us of perhaps the wanted posters of Jask? It yeah, and you think that, like, the features vaguely are uh, reminiscent of the one to posters that you've seen around. Mm. Well, we know what we have to do. Yes, well. There is a catch. The ship has been damaged heavily, and if we do not get a psi crystal in time to power it back up, we will be forced to abandon as temperatures drop. If that happens, we will self-destruct the ship to stop it from falling into the wrong hands. Yes, it is an unfortunate reality that we cannot let any terrestrial creatures have this type of technology. How long is the time limit in, like, days on this planet? It's entirely possible that right now we would only last 48 hours before we would be forced to abandon. Ooh. Well, do we have... Do we have psi crystals? Like, have we, have we even have we ascertained that what we that the shardlin and psi crystals are different? The shardlin and, the, and the, sorry, the shardlin yeah. and the, the other crystals that you have are different for sure. Um, but you don't, yeah, I'm not sure you know what they are. Who's got the sh who's carrying the shardlin? Uh, I've got the party loot on my okay purse thing. Um, I'll rummage around on this handy okay. have a sack that I happen to have with party loot. And I'll oh, pull out one that. of the Shardalins okay. and just present it to them. Yeah, what do you think of that? Huh? Uh, Vorin steps forward to you and he takes a look. These are impressive specimens, but they are not psi crystals. They look like empty power sources, if I were to guess. Something that could contain energy. But they are not psi crystals, no. Damn. Could they be charged, potentially? It is possible, but the mechanism by which it would be done is foreign to me. Mm. I can't help but feel that there's an answer at the fort. Mm. Sunlit, sunlight, sunrise. 
Okay. Well, how about these shards? Are these significant? I'm showing the shards right from episode one. Okay, so you pull out the shards that are wrapped in, I assume, something because they're emitting some sort of... Gauze. Like, cold, like they were cold to the touch, like they were frozen. Drainavax steps forward and takes a look at the... I assume it's sort of wrapped up in your hands, yes. These are not Psy crystals, but they do emanate some sort of power. Lauren, take a look at this. And Lauren steps over from Sveta and looks at them and goes, These are interesting structures. I do not know where you have found these. They do contain energy, though. And he looks at Dredovax. Do you think perhaps these can be adapted? Hmm. And he looks up at you. These might help us stabilize our environmental systems. They will not stop the decay that has happened, and they are not psi crystals, but they may give us a few additional days before we will be forced to abandon. I see. Well, perhaps we could offer one of these as a, a show of good faith. In return, perhaps you could give us one of the uh, the special guns. He looks. They look at each other, and like you see, one of them like if if they had eyebrows, it'd be cocked. <laughs> a tentacle cock. A tentacle cock. I believe that could be a fair trade. We are willing to part with one of the items now if you are willing to search for a proper psych crystal, and this will give us some more time for you to return. Indeed. With this time, I think we can we can find more of them, but we'll need two of those. These will never be able to get us to fly once again. We need psych crystals for that, but this gives us time for you to perhaps find them. Dredovax, and he gestures to his uh, to the other one who steps forward again and he pulls out a device that was strapped like on a like on a strap around his shoulder and he pulls it off and he presents it to you you should take this with you it is a psi crystal detector with the box which is sort of no bigger than a bar of soap it's quite small um, it emit, emits sort of he tells you, it emits an audible clicking sound when you are within five, mi- five miles of a Psy Crystal. The closer you are to the Psy Crystal, the more rapid the clicks. This could perhaps help you narrow down a place. And he Thank presents you. it to Woden. Oh, thanks. Well, it was going to be a laser gun, but... This is just to help you on your quest. We are willing to part with either one of our weapons, or... You perhaps you will instead like one of the other items that we have for offer. Is this part of the initial? He's willing trade? to. So he's. They've got a couple of items that they would give. They will give you if you return a sight crystal to them. They'll give you those items. But if you want to take one of them now, you need to take one of the weapons that they have, or you can take one of the other two. Uh, they have another two items they're willing to part with. They might be more helpful. Mm. Yeah. Because do any of us know how to use a gun? <laughs> What's a gun? Alien can point and shoot at things. He's got a decent dexterity score. Okay. He's been okay. using a crossbow the whole time. So it would be what nice to the, know what the other Yeah, what are the other items? What I will tell you is just so before you do get into this, mechanically, the items that he's offering you are laser pistols. <laughs> Hell yeah. They require intelligence checks just to use every time. Oh. <laughs> they are quite difficult to actually utilize, but they do do some damage. Yeah. So it might be difficult to utilize them in a pinch. However, he does offer two items, and so you see Vorin goes in, into the door behind you. It slides open, and he returns with two items. The first is a sticky metal monocle with a kaleidoscope lens, and the second is a slimy coif. Made of living, made of, Gross. made from a living space slug. Um, I'm going to tell you because it's. I'm not going to get you to roll for them. Uh, normally, I'd get you to make arcana checks, but they don't like they. They function like certain magical items. Mm. So the first one functions like an eyes of minute seeing, and the second one, of uh, acts as a helm of telepathy. The eyes of minute seeing, these crystal lenses fit over the eyes, and while wearing them, you can see much better than normal, out to a range of one foot. <laughs> you have on, you, it's you have, a microscope. Yeah, you have advantage on intelligence investigation checks that rely on sight while, re, while searching an area or studying an object within range. Handy. The helm of telepathy. While wearing this helm, you can use an action to cast detect thoughts as a spell. 
DC saves the spell save is DC thirteen. As long as you can maintain concentration on the spell, you can use a bonus action to send telepathic messages to a creature you're focused on, and it can reply using a bonus action to do so. Uh, and while your focus continues, while focusing on a creature with detect thoughts, you can use an action to cast the suggestion spell DC thirteen from the helm on that creature. Once used, suggestion can't be used again till the next dawn. I'm thinking maybe the helm. I'm thinking the laser gun. <laughs> Um, it looks kind of complicated to use, and I can spend an hour to make oh my god a magical weapon man. as my packed weapon, oh my and I become proficient oh in fucking laser guns. <laughs> oh my That's god. interesting because okay, so the laser pistol, just so you know, is I have to look at the player's handbook and I go to the proficiency, but uh, it has a limited ammunition. Once you've used it, it's out, right? Until I summon it again. <laughs> no, once it's used, it's used. One but shot. No. it does 3d6 radiant damage. And it has a range <laughs> of... Gone. It has a range of 40 and 120. It has a reload property. Property. Um, so it can be reloaded. It can be, but you wouldn't have any way of reloading it. Oh. Put it that way. Um, there is a thing here, and I'd have to read it, but there is a checks that you would normally need to do to operate alien technology. It's actually in the book here. I'm going to need a little bit of reading. But if you make it a packed wesh weapon, I kind of feel like that would just ignore all of those it's things. Up. It just makes yeah, you proficient it, in it. Well, and you wouldn't, otherwise there'd be no way of gaining proficiency in whatever the hell this is. What's, um, that, what's that guy who's like an authority on D&D rules? Jeremy Irons. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, Jeremy Irons is an authority of D&D. Crawford. Crawford. <laughs> Sorry, he was in the D&D movie. He doesn't know the D&D. <laughs> Jeremy Irons. <laughs> Quick, call up Jeremy Irons, he'll know. <laughs> this is actually a thing I didn't consider when I was reading this up. I'm like, oh, these laser pistols are going to be kind of fun, but probably not too useful. No range weapon automatically generates its own ammunition unless its description says or so. a special ability says otherwise. Yeah. Okay. But... I'm less interested in that and more interested in whether you can just pack it and use it. I guess that's a call I need to make. Well, it doesn't sound like it's going to be worth if I, if it's like a... 3d6 radiant damage. It. 3d6 radiant damage is a lot. Yeah. For, that's a first level spell in a, in a basic attack. One shot. But, uh, but how many shots? Like... I can let you know it's got 50 shots before it's... Oh, so I thought you said that one. Yeah, it's a strong like, one. That's, oh. Yeah, it's a pretty good one. And you and if you come back with the Psychrystal, you'd have a second one. Ooh. I am going to say, and I will probably regret this, and I may have to think about this between now and next week, but if you packed that weapon, I think that you kind of become proficient in it. You wouldn't need to make those checks to fire it. Hey, old man under the mountain, how does this work? <laughs> <laughs> what is that? It's a gun! <laughs> what has Roden got? It's got a gun! It's got a gun! Yeah, it's like, it's like the, the, the monkey, monkey from with um, a gun. <laughs> Hellboy. From Hellboy. <laughs> so, I guess the question I have for you is, what do you want to take? You can The strongest items here are probably the helmet telepathy or one of the laser pistols. Mm. I mean, the Helm of Telepathy seems generally very useful, um, but I'm actually really curious about the laser pistol. <laughs> it's fascinating, yeah. <laughs> and Warden can't keep his eyes off it. <laughs> Perhaps this would be the best. And he pulls the laser pistol out of his holster and hands it to you, to you, Woden. Sick gun. Woden is just, like, in disbelief. He's holding this in his hands, just... Staring at it wide eyed. <laughs> then it appears that we have an accord. If you take the Psy Crystal detector with you and find a Psy Crystal, return it to us. You may have the the remaining items as well. well Deal. Yes. Yeah? Alright. Yeah. Let's let's do it. Then if there is nothing further to discuss, you'll need to find out what happens next week on Reflex Save. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll ask next week. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jada Max.
What was that? I had a hiccup. Just one. That's all I can afford. <laughs>